Hello, my New York pigeons. Welcome back. My name is Mina and I'm your host today. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about the Gossip Girl reboot. And yes, there will be spoilers, so no one get mad at me. <laughs> As a disclaimer, I did not get past season one of the original Gossip Girl, and I actually watched it right before I watched the reboot. So one, I can't really compare the two series, and two, I went into the reboot without really any expectations or nostalgia because, again, like I didn't grow up with the original show. This is going to be a show review and a costume review. Um, originally, I wanted to do just a costume review, but I... I don't know, I felt kind of neutral about the costumes. I wasn't like impressed by them, but I wasn't particularly angry. There were pros and cons, but I think part of the reason why that is is because the lighting on the show was just really dark for a lot of scenes. And I couldn't really see the costuming details that clearly, especially because half the show like took place at nighttime. But anyways, let's get on to it. Too many joy rides in daddy's Jaguar. So during this season, the major conflict is between half-sisters Julian Calloway and Zoya Lott. Their mom passed away when they were young, and they live separately with their respective dads. Julian's ex-boyfriend also leaves her for Zoya. There's some drama about it, but not enough to feel realistic, honestly. Like, I'd be so angry if I was Julian, especially because Zoya is 14 and Obi is at least 17. That doesn't sit right with me. Gossip Girl, which is run by the teachers, yes, it's really dumb, has made it their mission to put rich kids in their place and for some reason decided to target these two sisters who are actually very nice. They may be the nicest girls in the entire school. Even Julian, who's supposed to be a bully and she has this moment where she's like, you know, apologizing for being a bully, is never actually that rude she's like not that mean in the show i don't know i just oh. oh i'm sorry i'm so sorry i also don't really know why the teachers decided to pick on zoya because zoya is a scholarship student she's apparently not as rich as all the other kids and she just transferred to the school like she hasn't been there so i don't know why she's the center of their little revenge plot I honestly, like, I couldn't get behind the first two episodes. I didn't like how they revealed Gossip Girl right away. Anytime these no-life teachers were on the screen, I was just like, ugh, please. Like, I just don't understand why they dedicate so much of their life to harassing students to the point of taking photos of their underage students undressing and getting another teacher fired to protect their account. It was just like so inappropriate, but also like so unrealistic. It's like these teachers literally live in New York City. Why are you spending your entire lives on Gossip Girl? The only time I get to work on my lesson plans or grade papers is after they go to bed, which is never. She's so like, what's the word? Like a limp noodle and not going to a fucking bar or something or seeing your friends. I don't know. There's just so much to do in New York. I was also really uncomfortable with the hot and heavy sex scenes, which I talked a little bit more about in my The Problem with Teen Dramas video. Long story short, no, I do not enjoy watching underage characters getting it on with each other with sensual music playing in the background and uh, soft prawn camera work. The creator, Joshua Safran, even said this in an interview with Teen Vogue. I believe that Audrey Aki Max moment at the end of the episode is as hot as it is because you fully understand each of these characters and exactly what they are feeling. Those actors acted that moment exactly as it should be and incredibly authentically, and I think that's why it's so hot. They keep their clothes on and they just kiss, but you feel that. I don't know, I just don't think we should be describing teen sex scenes as hot, but... Anyways... Actually, we're not moving on because I forgot to talk about this guy. His name is Rafa, and he's one of the teachers in the show who starts a predatory relationship with one of his students, Max Wolf. At first, it's kind of going down this teacher-student romance, uh, glamorization, but then it takes like a sharp turn when Max realizes that Rafa has a history of preying on his students. He ends the relationship, so then Rafa starts getting extremely aggressive, stalking his family, spreading rumors onto Gossip Girl that Max has an STI. I know, once again, extremely inappropriate and 
very, very gross. Thankfully, I will say that I do like this turn. You know, I don't know why we're so fixated on the teacher-student romance, but at least the series is setting him up to be this malicious villain that will hopefully end up in jail. I was hoping I can convince you to stay away from Max Wolf. What are you doing here? He's 17. He's a student. He's in one of your classes. A couple of the scenes were still uncomfortable, like the bathhouse scene I really just did not need to see ever, but uh, I'm glad they're taking this route, at least. By the end, the show was definitely trying to set up a thruple between Audrey Aki and Max. And again, I feel like they're not writing this romance because they want to give a good representation to polyamorous relationships, but because they think it's like hot, which I have a problem with. All in all, I do think the writers were a little confused with the direction they wanted to take with the show. There was a lot of pandering to old series fans. What are you doing? What if she's cool? She has a headband on. This scene was absolutely a reference slash poke at Blair Waldorf's signature headband. But there was also still an attempt to make the show more reflective of the new generation, to build something new and more socially conscious. Obi and Julian go to a protest in the finale, and Zoya is a loudspoken, um, passionate activist throughout the entirety of the show. Unhappy? You're demolishing a homeless shelter and increasing the homeless population for what? Condos with poor doors? I can see why some fans didn't like this approach or were skeptical about watching the show because a lot of the appeal of the old series comes from how out of touch and isolated these kids were from, like, real life. <laughs> It offered viewers like us an escape into this elite, glamorous world. But I, being not a fan of the original series, was pleasantly surprised by the incorporation of politics because it felt natural and integral to the storyline, um, integral to Zoya and Obi's relationship issues. Why'd you have to go so hard at him? Roger, he said it was fine. Of course he said it was fine, Zoya, and my mom. Your mom what? And Obi and Aki's relationship to their parents. It wasn't just like shoved in for woke points, which I feel like a lot of shows these days do. Because if we're gonna play that game, let's do it. Oppression Olympics, let's go. It also felt realistic to how a lot of the characters just had different moral compasses. Like some were more sensitive to certain issues, some were more ignorant. Um, it's reflective of how, you know, communities actually function. Episode three is when I actually started enjoying the show. The problems I had with the show didn't like go away or anything, but I think I just got used to it. Um, and also with HBO Max's weekly release schedule. So if you don't know, they didn't release all the episodes in one go like Netflix does. They release them like once a week. I felt like there was enough of a buffer time for me to sort of absorb the show. I think if I just watched it all in one go, I wouldn't be able to look past as much stuff and I wouldn't have been able to enjoy the show. So bottom line, would I recommend the show? Um, no. If... <laughs> Know if your personality leans more critical to the media you consume, and if like silly plot writing like annoys you, then I think you would find the show a very frustrating experience. But if you don't care and you just want to be entertained, then yes, it's a fun show. What have I ever done that's so terrible? You were in the Imagine video. Also in general, I think it's really hard to create a reboot that is both enjoyable to old fans and new fans. The old show was way campier, and I feel like this new show is like half camp, half real, <laughs> half serious. And I just wish they would have focused on One Direction because sometimes I felt like the writing was a little inconsistent. Okay, let's get into the costumes. Super rich kids with nothing but loose so the costume designer for the reboot is Eric Damon, who was also the costume designer for the original series. He said there was an average of 200 costumes per episode with each of the uniforms costing about $2,500. To create the costumes, Damon said that he studied Instagram influencers and mapped their connections to different designers and brands. He felt it was also important to shine light on upcoming New York designers and not just stick with these established heritage brands. This is what he said about the school uniforms, which make up at least half of each character's wardrobe on the show. School uniforms are such an iconic visual from the original Gossip Girl, and it's something that definitely parlayed between the two. With the new uniforms, I really colored outside the boxes, where we ended up designing all of this varsity gear with all of these logos and the heritage vibe that we didn't do with the original at all. 
thanks to the generous show budget, he ended up modifying designer jackets and putting uh, logos and crests onto them. He said, it's been a lot of fun to, I wouldn't say corrupt those designer pieces, but their Constance Villard varsity jackets by Saint Laurent. There is also a Christopher John Rogers Spring 2021 runway embedded into the pilot episode with Julian closing the show. Damon also went for oversized and athleisure styles because, quote, this generation loves the idea of comfort and doesn't want to give that up to look amazing. Those are the general costuming notes. So I thought I'd first start with the pros, like what I liked, and then get into the cons. In general, I love how each character had their own distinctive style. I think Damon is really good at doing that, as we saw with the original Gossip Girl. And I especially have that respect for him because this is really hard to do when you have a very limited color palette. Monet's style was described by Damon as Blair Waldorf meets Dion from Clueless, and it makes complete sense for her character. She is polished, type A, and ambitious. Luna's style is very feminine and soft, which was an interesting choice because she's actually pretty mean and condescending. You can't dress like the Paramus Uniqlo's back to school sale and not expect some feedback. But I think it works for her character, and I hope as the series progresses, she's given more dimension. Because for the majority of the first season, Monet and Luna just act as one-dimensional mean girl cronies. Though the fact that they both wear lots of bows to visually show that they're a dynamic duo is a nice, subtle touch. I'm hoping that for season two, because Monet has kind of split off from the group, that uh, she and Luna's individual personalities will come through a little bit more, and they'll wear less... uh, bows. I love Audrey's style personally the most. Damon compared her to Grace Kelly in an interview, but I don't really see it. But I do think she has this like old-timey diva energy to her. She also has these really wide eyes and a small mouth, so the doll-like style she has really flatters her. My favorite uniform look on the show is probably her Simone Rocha peplum shirt, the Valmen striped sweater vest, tights, and shoes that do not go at all with the outfit, but from the knees up, it's a look. I don't really want to get too much into the men because there's just like so many characters on the show, but I will give major props to Max Wolf's wardrobe because his outfits definitely stood out to me. I loved all the funky patterns and silky textures, which eludes a level of sexual confidence in himself and also a fearlessness in exploring gender. I believe Damon said that he used some women's clothing to style Max, which I absolutely love because as we know on this channel, clothing has no gender. Especially because Max is pansexual and was raised by two dads, it just makes total sense for him to have an experimental Harry Styles-esque fashion sense. But you raised me to be my most authentic self, did you not? Of course we did. And you are, and we wouldn't have it any other way. Now, Julian Calloway, the queen bee of the group, a runway model and social media influencer. She has a sporty, oversized, androgynous, casual look during the daytime and a shimmery, tight, nude, uh, bodycon, formal look during the night. I think having her showcase two different styles worked, and it reminded me a lot of celebrity influencer wardrobes like Sarah Snyder, Bella Hadid, and the Jenners who all have distinct off-duty streetwear looks and uh, more tight-fitted evening looks. Damon said in an interview, Julian Calloway has definitely been tagged as an influencer. To me, I look to supermodels and international celebrity more so than just your everyday Hadids, if you will. So think of an international supermodel that is cosmopolitan and has access to Cannes and goes to couture shows and has a bigger view of the world, which is also infused with the music world from her dad. He also cited Aditya Kesh as being a major inspiration for her style. When it comes to accessories, Damon said that Julian's shaved head allowed them to mix her harsh punk edge with a little bit of glamour um, by adding minimal luxurious earrings. Moving on to Zoya, she is the youngest of the group. She's a freshman and definitely gives off some Jenny Humphrey vibes. She has a grungier style, complete with flannel shirts, Doc Martens, and uh, comfy hoodies. Zoya also rewears her clothes pretty often to show that she has less money than her peers, and she also wears brands that are more mildly affordable, at least compared to Julian's designer wardrobe, such as Madewell and BB Dakota. I think it's nice that we can obviously tell which clothes she borrows from Julian and which clothes are from her own closet. Basically, whenever Zoya shows up at a formal event or to a bar, it's because of Julian. So in these situations, she tends to wear figure-hugging, shimmery dresses. 
Damon also said they purposely gave her tote bags with social justice slogans on them to visually showcase her values and passions. Given her outspoken personality and passion for social justice, it makes total sense for Zoya to want to support small local businesses. As for the teacher and head editor of Gossip Girl, Kate Keller, her style is pretty consistent. And yeah, I thought it was really good for her character, even though it's not personally anything I would wear. Her wardrobe consists mostly of tailored pants, sweaters, and collared shirts, which is very teacher appropriate. They also dressed her older, which worked well because Tavi's actually the same age as the actors playing the students. The first outfit she wears is reminiscent of Serena's first outfit on the show. This was absolutely purposeful. In an interview with Bustle, Damon said, I wanted Tavi in that first moment to show off and kind of emulate that Blake was everything. Serena was the it girl. I love that there's a connection between that first OG scene and that first reboot scene visually for the fans, that legacy to connect in a symbiotic way, but also that it's a little bit one step behind that she's dressing like Serena in a way versus dressing like Julian Calloway. In an interview with Refinery29, he also said this, it's like that first Serena moment, and then we get this Tavi moment, and you don't know. It's Tavi coming? Is she a student? Who is this new outsider? I liked how they used the clothing as Easter eggs for the original show fans. And it was also great, you know, that they hired the same costume designer for both shows. Because even though it's been 10 years, the styling for this show just seems very quintessentially Gossip Girl. At the same time, that's not necessarily like a good thing for new watchers who don't have this nostalgia for the old show. I think in general, when we look at the show as a standalone and not just as a branch of the Gossip Girl tree, the styling looks very clunky and honestly a little outdated. With that said, let's get to the cons. Okay, even though I liked the idea of all the characters having their own distinctive style, I felt like the execution was a little lacking. I did not like this fanny pack moment. The fanny pack peaked in its popularity around 27, 2018. And because Julian is this fashion forward girl whose image is very calculated, it didn't feel like she would be the type to wear a fanny pack. I don't know. Also wearing the fanny pack over the varsity jacket made the look kind of sloppy in my opinion. It came off to me as if they were trying a little bit too hard to be overly experimental, to create something new and never been done before, a new trend, um, maybe because they felt a lot of pressure from how well the old series did in terms of fashion. But lately, I've just noticed that people like in the real world uh, have been leaning towards more streamlined silhouettes. So the strange shapes they were creating was uh, an interesting choice. Julian is apparently a trendsetter, so I would have liked to have seen more elevated versions of popular Gen Z trends. So for instance, throwing a fur-trimmed coat or low-waisted jeans or a knit top to her look. Considering she's taking Instagram pictures at school, I would expect her or at least Monet and Luna, her social media managers, like have like a little bag change of clothes so that she can take photos during her breaks and not have her feet look just navy and cream. Something I also would have liked to see from Julian is her wearing more popular Instagram brands and not just high fashion brands. Because let's be honest, if she's popping off on social media, which seems to be like her big thing, and then her like smaller thing is a high fashion runway. So if she's popping off as much as she seems to be, then her PR gifting would just be insane. I also think that while her style leans more towards editorial, a lot of younger social media influencers styles don't. We have to remember she's in high school. Her style is pretty mature and I think because Jordan Alexander, her actress, is in her late 20s, it would have been nicer to have Jordan wear something more youthful like, you know, baby tees or anything from Marc Jacobs' Heaven line or having her support hip local New York City boutiques like Cafe Forgot. The youth thing isn't just for Julian, by the way. I felt like all the characters were a little aged up in terms of their styling, except for maybe Zoya. It's hard to make navy and brown look youthful, so the color palette is partially to blame, but I would have liked to see more knee socks, more platform shoes, more fun jewelry, not these grandma brooches. As for the evening looks, I wasn't really impressed by any of them, maybe because the lighting was so dark. But even though I did think they were dressed like college students, I think maybe they were just dressing older so that they wouldn't get kicked out of the bar because they're all still underage. 
yeah, I'm just going to pretend that's the reason so I can be at peace with it. <laughs> okay, that's kind of all I have to say for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the new Gossip Girl reboot, um, whether you liked it, whether you didn't like it, costumes, plot-wise, anything. And uh, thank you for your time. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you next time. Bye!